critically, and then how to express themselves through writing, which will be helpful for all of their courses that they take here. Um, so this is, again, a small class, contact with the faculty. There are some uh, peer mentors that support these classes as well. And again, all students will take this. So you may see it's on your student's schedule this semester. If not, especially if they're in honors college or the LLCs, they'll take it next semester. Um, and so this is, again, going to support them in all of their classes at UAlbany. Now, how do they get into these classes? I'm going to let Kristen share that. Thanks, Leah. I appreciate that. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry, I'm late. Actually, ran into one of the FOA faculty members, and we got caught talking about weather because he's an atmospheric scientist. So I cannot turn it off. The academic advisor and me. Good morning. Um, my name is Kristen Sweeney. I am the director of the Academic Support Center. It is lovely to see you all here. We are so excited to see your students later this morning. Many of us have been in contact with your students already um, to discuss their academic goals, um, career aspirations, etc. The first part of what I want to talk with you this morning is how did your students get registered for the classes they're in? We may have 10 students in here who are business majors and have 10 completely different schedules. And my job is to explain why. And so when your student signed up for orientation, um, they filled out a brief course questionnaire. Um, they gave us some preliminary information about career options, has their major changed from when they were admitted, um, you know, what kind of college credits they may be coming in with. We overlaid that with their first year experience pathway. Are you a direct admit to business and there's classes designated for you? Are you in a living learning community? Um, are you in the Honors College and there's designated courses? Um, the major function obviously for us is to help make sure that your students are pursuing the majors that they're interested in. So a lot of students we know will be changing their majors as they enter and move through college. And so our goal as academic advisors for your students first semester is to make sure that we are giving them the options to explore multiple majors and minors based on their interests and continue to work with them as they, they move through and declare into those uh, respective majors and minors. Um, we also, as advisors, love to get to know your students on paper, and so we did a deep dive into your students' admissions file. We looked at their letters of recommendation, their transcripts, their application, got to know your student on paper prior to meeting them today. Um, and we also looked at schedule constraints. Is your student an athlete and has practice schedules we need to work around? Um, are they commuting? Anyone from NISC unit today? No, just me? Never mind that. No neighbors today. Um, so if you're coming from this, you know we don't want to have students in classes on Mondays at 9 in the morning and then their next class is at 5 in the afternoon. Um, that's not really a good setup for our students. And so we wanted to make sure that you know that we tailored your students' schedule specifically to their needs um, and their skill sets and their strengths. Um, your student will have the ability to meet with their academic advisor today. Um, in that meeting, um, one of the things they will talk about is are you comfortable and confident with your schedule? Do changes need to be made because something has changed or um, you know, something's happened where you're in a work schedule or whatever it might be? We are here to make sure that your students are okay and they're understanding um, their class schedule. Now built into that class schedule is a bigger picture of what is it like to graduate with a degree from UAlbany. So we don't talk to our students about this because I know that we're getting in the way of them meeting friends today. And so we do some bare minimum, um, but we will work with your students um, every semester they're here at UAlbany to help them explain. But for you all to understand, in order to graduate from UAlbany, you need to complete 120 credits in order to graduate. Each class at UAlbany is roughly three credits, so that's about 40 college courses your student will complete within the next four years. Um, every major here is different. We have 50 plus majors and 60 plus minors we offer at UAlbany. Um, major credits can range from 102 credit electrical and computer engineering major to a 72 credit social welfare major to a 63 credit business major to a 36 credit history and economics and sociology major. So each one of your students has specific degree requirements that they are moving through based on their particular um, pathway as they're entering to UAlbany. I'm working with a freshman right now who's a math major who has 45 credits coming in. He's taking Calc 3 in the fall. His roommate who's a math major might be taking Calc 1 because they haven't taken calculus yet. And so we try to make sure our students understand that the broader picture of their education. Um, many students at UAlbany are also required to complete a minor at UAlbany. Um, minors are 18 credits, they're about six classes. Students choose minors, whether it's to complement their major, whether it is maybe, I was a history minor in college because I didn't want to fully commit to a major, but I really still love the subject, and so I was able to kind of choose my own adventure in that minor. Um, we have a ton of minors at Albany that are not majors, and so Leah's gonna talk a little bit later about the much of the majors talk. We have minors at Albany, film studies, bioethics, medical anthropology, law and philosophy. There are lots of ways in which students can really um, dig in and learn a different subject in a multitude of ways. Um, students are also required to complete general education requirements at UAlbany. There are 10 distinct gen ed categories that we require students to complete from arts to international perspectives to natural sciences to humanities. Um, 
Within each of these gen ed categories, we offer between 30 and 60 class choices. And so our job as academic advisors is to make sure that your students are picking their general education requirements based on their interests and their skill sets, not just to check off a box, right? So I did, I, when I was in college, um, my art gen ed was fulfilled with a Chinese art history class because I was an anthropology major and I love people and cultures. And I was able to expand my knowledge of people and culture through the lens of art in China. That was great for me. Other students might just want to take hip hop music and culture or Egyptian archeology. span I could do this all day, Leah, but I won't. All right, um, so the last thing is uh, elective credits. So every student at UAlbany needs to complete a number of elective credits to graduate. That's gonna be tailored to your specific student, right? My math major I talked about has about maybe 15 elective credits. Some students coming in might have close to 36 electives. And so when we're thinking about our freshmen coming in wanting to be productive with our courses, they're looking to take major classes, minor classes, general education. It is okay to take electives. Electives are classes students are required to take to earn that 120 credits. And so the ways in which we encourage our students to look at how do I take elective courses to learn different subjects? Maybe you want a multiple major. Maybe you would like to minor in multiple things. Maybe you'd like to study abroad um, and, and earn credits in electives um, in another country. Maybe you want to go to a semester in Washington, D.C. internship program. Maybe you'd like to participate in research. There's lots of ways in which students can take advantage of those elective credits to make themselves more, more well-rounded and enriched in their education. And we will be discussing this with your students every time we meet. Okay, so these are the University Academic Advisors, not all of us in this teeny tiny picture, uh, the last time we had a Christmas party. Um, so uh, we are 24 professional full-time advisors whose dedicated um, job is to meet and work with your students. Um, we have a unique advisor model at UAlbany. Your student meets with their advisor today. They are, um, their advisor will be with them from admission to graduation. That person is paired with them from when they start and they transition to college to choosing the majors, maybe making adjustments to their academic and career goals, declaring another major. Your advisor will be with your student as they study abroad, as they get that first paid internship, and as they graduate. Um, this is a unique advising model that we have at one of the big SUNY centers. We want to make sure that your students are getting, are getting the, the best attention, continuity of care, and consistency of information as they navigate through their academic careers at UAlbany. Our advisors are specifically um, trained in uh, the transitional issues. We understand that there are lots of things that are going to be going on through your students' brains today and through their experience as they come to college in the fall, whether it's academic or elsewise, right? Finding a sense of belonging. I remember in college, it was like a first date every time I ate in the dorms for the first month. Anyone else? That was really stressful. It was really lonely. And so we understand that there are things that are going to affect your students that they may not anticipate. And so we're here to help them um, and be proactive and connect you with them to make sure that they, they have the support that they need when they get here. We also offer specialized advising services in pre-law as well as pre-health advising, uh, academic coaching as well as tutoring. And so again, I just wanted to just show you briefly the student success team that we build. We center your student around their success team. So although we have 13,000 undergraduate students, each student has a dedicated student success team to help them navigate the UAlbany system, right? So we try to refer people to students to a person, not a place. Just don't go to financial aid and have your question answered. You have a dedicated financial aid advisor that's connected to your student success team. Or you're an international student, you've got Rachel Moody, um, who is there to help you as you transition from another country. Or athletes have advisors and every student living in the dorms has a residence hall director. And so we try to make sure within the student success model that we're thinking of your student in a holistic manner. There are things that will be affecting them inside and outside of the classroom, and they will need help whether they know they, they will or not um, from the start of college all the way through graduation. And so this ebbs and flows. And so as your student progresses and declares into their major, the university academic advisor will stay with that student, but they will also get an advisor within their dedicated major. Working with advisors, Leah and I get a half hour to present an hour's worth of content. That's why we were talking so fast. I promise you we were better public speakers than this. And so um, I, will, I will ask you all to take out your phones like you do my students and take a picture um, of this slide. If you have questions and you email advisor at albany.edu or you, have, uh, you want to pick up the phone and speak to a real person, I promise we'll answer the phone and direct you to the, your student's academic advisor or answer your questions. And so um, working with academic advisors, students are required to, come to meet with their academic advisor at least once a semester. We will be reaching out and connecting with your students in a multitude of ways, whether meeting them for lunch or breakfast in the dorms, whether meeting them in the, the lecture center concourse, going to the month for the majors. There's lots of ways in which we will be connecting with your students, but at least once a semester, your student has to meet with their academic advisor to make sure that everything is going okay, that we're planning appropriately for the next semester, and making sure that their academic, um, academic goals and professional goals um, are being met with their degree progression. 
We're also on social media. I'm gonna say that and leave it there. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram and via um, Twitter, I think. Um, I still use it on my desktop and my young people tell me I should use it on my phone, so I am the worst. So I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. So what we're gonna talk with your students today is organization is key. You guys all know that. As adults, we know organizing ourselves is key to success in college. Now, um, when your student comes to school and they're in a 400 person lecture center that perhaps doesn't take attendance or they have classes that have required readings but nobody's checking that they're doing the readings, human nature tells us maybe I don't go to class, maybe I don't do those readings that week. And so academic advisors are here to help your students get into the right mindset for college. Your students are here, this is the first time they are paying for their education, this may be the first time they are choosing their academic pathway, and so we wanna make sure that they're organizing themselves from the semester length picture, the weekly picture, as well as the daily. What am I doing to organize myself so that I'm on top of my work? Not just again, like Leah said, you know, checking out those boxes, but am I making the most of my educational experience every semester? And so organizing ourselves um, is an art, um, and it will change every semester, so that's why we're here to help with your students. Um, our ultimate goal is to have your students take ownership of their education. Um, we wanna make sure that your students are advocating for themselves in their degree. So attending office hours, we understand that students who are 18 year old may be a little more uh, intimidated by a faculty member and going into their office hours. And so we are here to help provide scripts, help provide mock office hours for your students to let them know that there's ways in which you can approach your professor. I'll help you with the questions and kind of walk you through what the experience might be. And off, on the off occasion, we do attend office hours with your students if there's a particular sticky situation. Um, after your students leave orientation today, we would want your students to be reading their my all the email on the daily. And so please make sure that you're asking your student and encouraging them to either download that on their phone um, because they're getting their room assignments, which is super exciting. They're getting their bill, not as exciting. Um, they're getting class choices and changes. And so everything that's important to your student is now coming to you all in email. And so we want to make sure your students are checking that. Also, we wanna make sure your students are checking Blackboard for daily course updates in case anything changes. Maybe a book gets swapped out in their first year experience class and, and they need to be aware that the book they purchased was not, that won't happen though, because we are buttoned up on that front. That was a bad example. But we wanna make sure your students are checking Blackboard to make sure classes are set up appropriately. Um, and again, if your student is feeling disconnected, um, we would encourage them to maybe start a study group. Um, on the back of your, your programs today and your students' programs, there is a new EAB Navigate, uh, a Navigate app. It is an app that students can download that provides them um, kind of a, a list of their schedule. There's also a really cool um, study buddy section where on the, the, the touch of a button, your student can request anonymously um, to start a study group with students. And I think our students really enjoy that um, being anonymous right now. Um, but they won't be when they get back into, into the classroom. Um, connect with a peer advisor. We have lots of students who've already gone through the experiences your students are going to go through. Um, as well as, you know, make an appointment with your advisor. Um, we hope today that your students leave knowing that their academic advisor is a kind and caring person who is here for them as an individual. And so if your student is feeling disconnected, ask them, go talk to your advisor. Just go say hey, um, and we're here for them. We also offer two supplemental ways to support your students academically. One is through academic coaching. Um, this is Barbara Brown. She is located in the Bean today next to the ironically closed Starbucks. Um, and so she is here to meet with parents and, and students today um, to kind of, you know, introduce herself as the academic coach. She is another layer of support to help students pinpoint areas of stress. Maybe it's time management. Maybe it's reading a textbook. Maybe it's motivation or clarity in their degree or professional goals. Barbara Brown is here to help students their first year all the way through graduation. We also offer a lot of different tutoring opportunities. Um, and so when students pay the academic excellence fee in their bill, um, they are paying for all of the tutoring services. So when a student walks into tutoring, they do not have to pay out of pocket for anything. We offer um, highly qualified, trained undergraduate peer tutors who provide one-on-one -on -one tutoring as well as group tutoring. We offer a 24 seven um, online tutoring service called NetTutor, which is actually connected to your student's Blackboard account right now. We also offer a variety of tutoring services across campus, whether it's the Writing Center, um, Car Center for STEM subjects, um, C Step and Project Excel, um, Math and Economics, um, and I could name a couple of more. And so we want to encourage um, your students to attend tutoring if they need assistance, but also if they're doing really good but want to do even better to go, or if they want to become a tutor at some point in time to get to know the tutors, get to understand how they're working. And so um, I think that's the end of my spiel. I'm going to give it back to Leah to talk just a little bit about um, a, a couple of the programs that we're going to be offering to your students in the fall semester. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, and again, if you'd like to take out your phones and take a picture of this slide, these are programs that are offered every year to all students, not just new students. Um, and so these are ones that you can kind of just keep in your back pocket and, you know, a couple months down the line, pick up the phone, ask if your students have 
considered um, taking one of their professors out to lunch with the Food for Thought program. Or as finals roll, roll, roll around, uh, make sure they are checking out Food for Finals, which is where our faculty and staff will serve late night snacks to our students in the dining halls, on the quads, to meet students where they are, make sure they're um, all prepared for finals, take a study break, and also uh, they'll be handing out study tips. Now, Explore U Albany is the first program that students will um, experience when they come here for the part two of orientation, fall orientation, after they either move on to campus or if they're commuting, uh, come to campus a couple of days before classes begin. And that's going to be students' first opportunity to be in what feels like a classroom setting and hear a lot of these academic support um, resources, recommendations, tips from some of our current students who will be imparting their own wisdom onto our new students. Lunch with the Majors is the program Kristen mentioned once or twice that is going to be in late September and is for all students to come and almost speed date with all of our different academic departments. So we'll have faculty from all of our departments there, from all of our majors, all of our minors, um, and from all of those experiential learning offices that we've talked about so that students really can go table to table and either learn more about their own intended major if they think they figure that out at this point or really just explore some of the other academic offerings that we have here. Um, we hear from a lot of our students that by attending much of the majors, they've made a firmer decision about a minor or uh, an experiential education program that, that, that they would like to explore. So we're gonna wrap it up here. And obviously the, con the conversation will continue with your students and their advisors all throughout their time here. But we really just want to reemphasize that we are all on the same page here. We want your students to meet lifelong friends. We want them to explore their interests, uh, find their career and professional goals, um, and really find success both inside and outside of the classroom. So we thank you for joining us here this morning. Uh, as Kristen mentioned, the advisors are thrilled to be connecting with your students later today. And it is almost August, so believe it or not, we will see your students back here in, in a couple of weeks. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you.